Now let's give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Come on, let's shout unto the Lord. He's worthy. True the Lord is worthy. Nobody can do you like Jesus. He's worthy of all the praise. If he be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go higher. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. We magnify you, we glorify you, Lord. None like you, none like you, none like you, Jesus. Come on. None like you, none like you, none like you, none like you. He's do all the glory. He's do all the honor. He's do all the praise. If it had not been for the Lord. Who is on our side? Where would we be? Praise God. We greet you in the matchless name of Jesus. We honor the presence of the Spirit of the Lord. Praise God. We're glad to be here. This is our second time here, so obviously, in our introduction, we believe when we come one time, we're visitors, the next time, we're part of this family. Amen, somebody. We're part of this family. I don't style myself as a visitor, praise God. And mainly because the Spirit of the Lord welcomed me here. And I just want you to know today that I'm sitting here on assignment, praise God. The Lord assigned me here. This hour, this moment, hallelujah. As we, as we found ourselves in the scripture, how many know it's good to find yourself in the scripture? Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. But we thank and praise God for each and every one of you, the bishop, praise God, Pastor Allison, Pastor Jeffrey and his wife, and the whole congregation. We just thank God for this opportunity to be before you. And then my spirit is just racing. I said, we've been here for 10 days, and we've been on assignment, praise God, fulfilling what the Lord has had us to do. And God is faithful, praise God. How many know God is faithful? God is faithful in, in, in how we have been assigned to this uh, apostleship, praise God, and, and, and we have received our assignment. And one thing about it, as I said, finding yourself in the scripture, before we get into the word today, we found ourselves in the scripture Really, the last time it was revealed to us, and I shared something with you, um, the last time that we were here, um, and again, it come be made manifest unto us, and how the Lord really called us out and sent us out, and, and one main thing that I want to reiterate today, as I said, I'm here on assignment, um, is found in the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter, and just this portion how the Lord sent out his 12. And he has sent Pastor D out, Pastor D and I out, uh, to this said nation, if you will, to this said country. And um, verse 11 said, and into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till you go thence. And when you come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever not re shall not receive you, nor hear your words when you depart out of that house of that city, just shake the dust off of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in that day than the judgment for that city. And how the Lord hath sent us out and has called us out. And even unto this place. And I believe we have found a house. And as we are in this house, as I come to this house, we come to be a blessing by the unction of the Holy Spirit. And if you enter a house, I believe this house is worthy. And he said, when you find a house, salute that house or bless that house. So I bring the blessings of the Lord as I am on assignment from God. If you believe that, you ought to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Because it's something that God has uh, placed in us to dispense here in the spirit realm. Praise God. And first of all, I stand in agreement. Praise God with the building of that cathedral. Praise God. I say it is so. I decree a thing. And the people shall bring more than enough for the building of the sanctuary. Hallelujah. My God, I believe that. And we're standing in agreement with some things that we're going to share. We're going to discuss with Bishop. 
praise God, in the furtherance of that. But I want you to know, praise God, as we've been here, praise God, we just want to give a praise report, hallelujah, on yesterday, and it was a grand experience for us. Praise God, I believe on, uh, we were in revival, we were in, uh, in Kus Kusuma, and, and, and we were in Bita, and we were doing revivals and, and, and meetings and things like that, and we were able, um, I believe it was last Yesterday, let me start with yesterday, we baptized 17 folk in the name of Jesus Christ, standing in that Lake Victoria, praying God, hallelujah, they gave their heart and their soul unto the Lord. Somebody ought to be happy about what the Lord is doing. And in Peter, after the meeting, it was 19 people that went down in the name of Jesus, praying God, hallelujah, they gave their heart to the Lord. That's what it's all about, souls coming to the Lord. Amen. Are you happy about souls? Yes. And so as we begin to see, hallelujah, the ministry being fulfilled, hallelujah, and we begin to see the expansion of territory, we begin to walk in the authority of which God has called us. So that's what we just want to allude to today, praise God, and as we talk about that, we're just going to go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians, Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Because I believe it's very important, praise God. Alignment is very important. How many believe that? Alignment is very important. Because when you're in alignment, praise God, you can be in unity. Praise God. And when we're unified, the Spirit of God has no restrictions. So in other words, if we're in agreement. Somebody say agreement. And it's not so much being in agreement with me. It's agreement with the will of God. But surely we have to identify with ourselves uh, to be in proper alignment. So if we see uh, alignment to be in correct or appropriate position, all of us must be in correct or appropriate position. And I was just watching, uh, you know, the order and the structure and the alignment of the services, how things are done, the Bible said, decent and in order. And we recognize the alignment of the structure, the moving in and the moving out, but it's an alignment that's necessary that we all must be in an appropriate position. But three things that are key to be in appropriate positions, to be in alignment. Number one, first we got to hear. Number two, we have to trust. And number three, we have to obey. Hear, trust, and obey. So I believe it starts within us. Praise God. The Bible said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Praise God. We are the church. Amen? Because the Bible said, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So we are the church. But the spiritual alignment, it can be viewed as a concept that has to do with your soul's attitude toward God. If you hear the Spirit of God, hallelujah. See, there's things that are, are in our soulless realm that are in our flesh, praise God, that we have to yield and align with the perfect will of God. All right? So, in other words, this body, in our soul is our mind, our will, and our intellect, but the body has to align uh, with the soul. And as the soul maintains submission, praise God, to the spirit, and the spirit, hallelujah, in a position of submission to God. We're a three-part entity, right? Mind, body, and soul. So the spirit has to line up. Our spirit has to line up with the Holy Spirit. Amen? And then our will and our intellect, the things, hallelujah, and our mind, will, and intellect has to line up with the spirit. And then the body comes subject, praise God, because of the will of God that needs to be done in us. So we have to make a personal uh, uh, commitment and a personal agreement to obey God. We have to hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. We have to obey the voice of God. And surely we have to trust the voice of God. Hallelujah. By faith, as they walked up here, the committees, they walked up by faith. They trust what God was speaking to them to come by faith. They came with the spirit of obedience, yielded themselves unto the spirit of the Lord. It wasn't so much, praise God, of the appeal of the bishop, but of the response to the spirit of God that pricked their heart. So when we do that, we become in proper alignment with the will of God to be done.
done in us. And God has a perfect will for each and every one of us. And I believe now is the time for the body of Christ to totally line up. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I don't know, praise God, but I, as a sense in my spirit, at least, you know, the things that we have encountered, that there's a war going on. Praise God. But the war is a spiritual war. Amen. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against, huh, my God. But we wrestle against what? Spiritual wickedness, principalities, rules of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. See, but you have to be, praise God, positioned in proper alignment in the spirit realm to wage war in the spirit. In other words, in the natural, in the corner, you can't wage war in the spirit realm. Amen. So, when we talk about this alignment, let's get to the scripture here. Ephesians 4 and 1, the apostle Paul said, I therefore a prisoner of the Lord. My God, I'm glad to be a prisoner of the Lord. He said, I beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. Everybody's been called unto something. God has graced us with many gifts, but Paul's beckoning, he said, I, I beseech you that you walk worthy, praise God, of the vocation wherewith we have been called. He's going to say, with all lowliness, with all meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Hallelujah. Endeavor, here it is, endeavoring is our charge, is our responsibility, is our desire, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. Somebody say unity of the spirit. Unity of the spirit. Unity of the, spirit. Unity of the Holy Spirit in us, hallelujah, that is in us and through us. Unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Why sis? There is one body, hallelujah, one spirit, <laughs> even as ye are called in the hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. But unto every man is given grace unto according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men. Now that he has ascended, what is but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended far above all heaven, that he might what? Feel all things. Hallelujah. Here it is. And he gave some apostles, prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. What was the purpose? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. How long? Till we all come into the unity of the faith, and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So here we see uh, Paul is beckoning us to come into the unity of the Spirit. And for us to be in the unity of the Spirit, we first of all have to be properly aligned with the Spirit. We have to hear the voice of God, obey the voice of God, and trust the voice of God. Hallelujah, as he beckons us. But next, hallelujah, as we properly align ourselves, praise God, we are to be staying in alignment with God, being in step with his will, and being unified with his spirit. Therefore, we'll get to a place that we can see the manifested glory of God amongst the church. Praise God. I believe the church today, pray to God, there's a war going on, as I said, there's a war going on. And so therefore, how many know that anytime there's a war going on, you have to have a strategic plan in warfare. And it's time for the body of Christ to be unified, to have a strategic plan against the devil himself. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but as I said before, there's a war going on. And the Bible indicates in the book of Revelation that there was a war in heaven. 
praise God, and Michael the archangel began to fight, praise God, and he prevailed, praise God, and the enemy was cast down here to earth. But as I say to you today, as we desire to keep that unity of peace and that bond of perfection, it's a war going on. It's a war going on that tries to hinder the praises of the people of God. It's a war going on trying to hear the assemble, hinder the assemble of the oneness of God in the body of Christ. As I said, I've been sitting here on assignment to connect to help edify the body. And if we just agree with the power of God, agree with the spirit of God, agree with the assignment of God, agree with the anointing of God, if we endeavor to keep the unity of the peace. Or in my mind's eye, you know, the Bible indicates that this mind is the battlefield. But there's some things that we have to do. We have to put on the whole arm of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We have to gird ourselves, hallelujah. Gird up our pure mind. We got to have the shield of faith to gird ourselves, to stand against the wiles of the enemy. That we come into the unity in the oneness. But that war is going on, but we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but it's principality. And as we wage war, hallelujah, we need to get into a, a higher place of praise, if you will. A higher praise of worship, if you will. A higher place of commitment with God, hallelujah, that we begin to pull down strongholds, hallelujah. Don't you know, praise God, every time you make a commitment to do something for the Lord, every time you make a, a decision, hallelujah, the people came up and made a decision. We made a decision to be saved, hallelujah. How many made a decision? And how many does the Spirit of God live in? Raise your hand. The Spirit of God lives within you. Hallelujah. So we have the power from the Lord himself. Because after that, the Holy Ghost come upon you. You shall have power. Praise God. We got power. Hallelujah. Somebody say power. power. Now we got to exercise our power in agreement. Praise God. With the unity of the spirit. The Lord said, I have blessed you with some authority. And with that power, you can speak things into existence. With that power, you can decree a thing and it is so. With that power, you can step into the enemy's camp and take everything that the enemy has stolen from you. I want you to know with that power, nothing shall withhold the move of God. If we believe it and if we line up with it and if we decree it, and surely we got to walk in it. See, we come walking in the authority of the power of the Holy Ghost. Pray God, when the Holy Ghost shows up and the man of God shows up with the Spirit of God vibrant in him, pray God, we can speak it into the atmosphere. My God and devils begin to tremble at the name of Jesus. Because the name of Jesus is a strong tower and the righteous run in and are safe. And I declare it's time for the people of God to unify with the Spirit of God, to unify with the power of God. I'm talking about the the goodness of the Lord. See, sometimes we forget what the Lord has done for us. Sometimes we forget what God has brought us through. Hallelujah. If we just think of the goodness of Jesus, we'll begin to shout a shout like never before. If we remember the day when he picked us up out of the muck and miry clay and he turned us around. Hallelujah. I don't know, praise God, but God, hallelujah, has saved me. Hallelujah. He delivered me. He healed me. Everybody has a testimony. And you can't tell mine and I can't tell yours. But when I think of where God has brought me from and where he's taken me to, only thing I can do is just give God some praise. Only thing I can do is say yes Lord, I will obey. Yes Lord, I will trust you. I walk in the admonition of you declaring your word, oh God. And when I get there to declare your word, I'll exercise my faith in you to pull down the stronghold that holds Mindset. The Bible said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So if he's called you for such a time as this, it's a renewing of our mind to identify what God has placed in us. Amen. Now, how many really know what God has placed in you? In other words, every one of us should have a personal mission, a mission statement. What is your mission statement? Well, if you don't know your mission statement, you have to ask God. 
How do you, because the only way you're going to identify with your mission statement, it has to be revealed by the Spirit. That's why I say, he that has to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Praise God. It doesn't matter what God has revealed unto you as your mission, but we all are fitly joined together in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. As every joint supply. So what are you saying? That every part of the body is important. Tell yourself, I'm important. I'm important. Because it was Jesus that made me again another. It was the power of God hallelujah, that changed me from the inside out. It's the power of God that placed us together in the body. He said that's why he made some apostles, some prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Pray God for the edifying. Somebody say edifying. edifying. It's time to edify and build up the body of Christ. But as we recognize not only the fivefold, but whatever we are, whoever we are, just being in the body is more than enough. Don't you know just being saved is more than enough? How do you ought to be glad about the investment that God invested in you? How many are investors? Yeah, we've invested in something. And one thing about investment, you are looking, we are looking for what? A return, my God, on our investment. So as God has invested his spirit in you, he's looking for a return on his investment. In other words, he's looking for his anointing, hallelujah, his glory and his power to be revealed here in this earth out of you. Not to see you, but to see himself in you. He wants to see a reflection of himself in the earth, praise God. And he's using the people of God. He's using the five-fold ministry. He's using anybody that will have the faith to put their self in the way. He's using those that will hear and obey. He's using those that will trust. But one thing about it, when we get to that place, we got to unify. Unify. And the mind is the place of the battlefield. Let me say this one thing. And I wonder, I don't know, this is a learning way for me, but I wonder, I've heard this about us since we've been here. There was some children that said it, and then at the mall, they said it, the security guards in the mall, they called me uh, <coughs> Mzuzu, <laughs> white man, what is the word? <laughs> huh? That's what I'm talking about. Mazugu. I think that's a mindset. Because I look at myself. Huh? I look at myself. No Mazugu is black. No Mazugu black. But I see the mindset that came with that. It's almost like the expectation you from America. So you a white man. And so I guess they think money and riches come with that. No, 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 no. I'm rich in Jesus. I, I mean, I'm rich in Jesus. In Jesus, I got more than enough. But the mindset of what that, I, I didn't understand that. You're rich in my, No, I'm rich in Jesus. Because the Bible indicates to me, praise God, how they, that there was a flood. And after the flood, Noah came out of the ark with a son. Amen? And Ham, prayed God, hallelujah, he had son, prayed God, you all know the story, but they migrated to this area, the family of Ham. So I'm a descendant, I'm a descendant, I'm not a white man in America, I'm a descendant, my God, from that tribe that migrated to Africa here near the Egypt. So I look more like you, more like you than any white man. But what makes us unified is the power of the Holy Ghost. I look more like you in Jesus. I walk more like you in Jesus. I proclaim like you more in Jesus because with Jesus, we're unified. It's the Holy Ghost that's the common denominator, amen, that makes us one. Amen, somebody. So I don't want to hear none of that Mazunga stuff. Hallelujah. And I don't want that to be in the mindset of the people. He's from a, no, I'm a child of the Most High God, who God has ordained for such a time as this. And he said, go ye therefore into nations, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ our Lord. Go ye there healing, my God, delivering and pulling down strongholds. So now I come walking into the authority of Jesus Christ to bring blessings upon this house. I speak blessings, hallelujah, in every aspect, oh God. 
I speak blessings. I speak more than enough. He said, when you go into the house, salute the house. I salute this house. He said, leave the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I leave peace. I speak peace. And also, hallelujah. He said, go healing the sick, raising the dead. Is somebody in here, perhaps the sick, my God, is somebody here that's dead spiritually that needs to raise up. Hallelujah. I make up here right now. My God, if you just agree with heaven, agree with the spirit of God, my God, and I just say, come forth. Come about. Take them grave clothes off. You've been in the grave clothes long enough. It's time for the body of Christ to unify. Unify. Say yes to your will, Lord. Say yes to the spirit of God. We need more of you, hallelujah, that we are one in the body of Christ. Somebody say one. one. It's only a remnant few. Somebody say one. one. How many going to agree with the spirit of God that we are one? one? There's no division in Christ. One faith, one Lord, one baptism. Who's father of all. He's in us all and through us all. Hallelujah. If we just join together in the faith of God, if we join together in the power of God, the Bible said one to chase a thousand, two chase ten thousand. It's time, pray God, to put the enemy on the run. I don't know, but it seems like to me every place huh, that our feet tread upon, God has made it holy ground. So when it's holy ground, it seems like, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit has to lift up the standard when the enemy comes in like a flood, hallelujah. I didn't get challenged until I got saved. Perhaps you're not going through no challenges, but it's a war going on, and I identify it's a spiritual warfare. Hallelujah, it's a spiritual war. God wants to release some things in here. He wants to release some things from individuals. Hallelujah. Only you and God know your position that you're in. Only you and God know. I don't know, but God knows. And there's a beckoning to come. Hallelujah. There's a beckoning to come. Pray God, this is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. Hear ye the word of the Lord. It's time for the church to come up. Pray God. It's time for the church to rise up. Wherever we are, it's not high enough in him. The heat's being turned up, hallelujah. Things that we experience, hallelujah. I think there's a mindset, there's a misconception somewhat about the United States. A misconception. Hallelujah. There's a misconception. I was sharing with some of the pastors where we were, and they, they, they just couldn't believe it. But it's a mindset, because there's a mindset in the United States about Africa. You don't know until you experience Seems like the mindset, it, it, it was unbelievable when I told them it's high crime rate in the United States. High crime. You know, the, the women over there can't walk around the streets like they do at night here. Freedom. The women just walking. Freedom. Because I see that it's safe. But over there, no, you can't do that. You can't just walk like that. Because it's a spirit, it's a spirit just lurking over there. It's spirits of, of, of alcoholism and drunkenness. Yeah, we experience some of the same thing, but not more over there is drugs, hardcore drugs. But it's a demonic activity, hallelujah. And we've made a decision, praise God, as pastors, praise God, that we're going to pull down those strongholds and it won't take over our community. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. But it's a mindset. It's a mindset, hallelujah. Hallelujah, that everything in, in Africa is like rural. It's a mindset. No, I said, well, they got malls and shops just like we do. But it's a mindset. But the thing of it is, in changing our mindset, at the last days, I believe we're in the last days, hallelujah. The Bible says men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Truth breakers, heady, high-minded, praise God. We have to take a stand in the body of Christ. We have to take a stand in our community. We are taking a stand in the nations that the people come together and unify by the Spirit of God and take what's rightfully ours. How many know the Lord has given us the city? The Lord has given us the land. Not by might nor by power, but it's by the Spirit of the living God. Honey, don't you know this territory, my God, is ours. It belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, go. 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 No doubt this church.
church is prominent in this area. But I decree you haven't seen nothing yet. Thank God. You haven't seen nothing of an outpouring of the Spirit of God that's going to multiply in this place. Not just with bodies, but with people that are saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost. And with power that we take over. Hallelujah. What God has rightfully given to us. But it's going to take a unity in the Spirit. In other words, it's going to take an agreement in the spirit. Now we want to agree with that. It's going to take an agreement. Say agreement. Agreement. agreement, agreement. With the spirit of God. You know, I, I have a I have a I have a warrior mentality. Huh? And sometimes I want how many saints of God have that warrior mentality? Huh? I'm not talking about a soldier. I'm talking about a warrior. A warrior is going to step out into the enemy's camp. See, soldiers, they're just going to, they, where the battle take them, they're going to take. But a warrior is going into the enemy's camp. And I believe God is calling for warriors. And as warriors, where are the worshipers at? There has to be proper alignment of the true worshiper. Because God is seeking those true worship. My God. Any true worshipers in here? I know they in here. God said, I'm seeking you. My, I'm seeking the true worshipers. Uh, my God, because you are the front line uh, in the strategy, oh God. You go create the atmosphere through worship. Hallelujah. My God, and there's got to be some praises going on. Pray God, if any warriors in the house, proper alignment. There's just a few over here. My God, but I know those warriors, praise God, are not representing her. this whole assembly. Praise God. There's more warriors in the house. And God is saying, Stand up and be identified. Huh? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You've been bought back with that price of that precious blood. So we got a right to wage war. We got a right to unify. We got a right to declare the goodness of the Lord. We got to declare something. Make a declaration. If we believe it. Hallelujah. If we believe it, hallelujah, one faith, one Lord, baptism, God of our, Father of all, who's in us all and through us all, hallelujah. I want how many believers in the house? Huh? Well, why don't you open your mouth and just begin to praise God? Come on, open your mouth, begin to praise God. Come on, begin to, something's happening in the praises of his people. When praises go up, the blessings of the Lord come down. Well, if you, my God, if you're praising, you ought to be in agreement. That's what we're talking about, in agreement, in proper alignment, praise God. If the Spirit of God is saying pray, we ought to be praising. Hallelujah. Come on, we we'll pray, pray, pray. Pray without ceasing. We ought to pray like never before. We ought to praise like never before. Because I believe in God. I believe for the fire of God to call down. My God, I call down, my God, the fire of God to unify this place, unify the people as we see set ourselves strategically to wage war. It's a war going on. Nothing shall hinder my praise. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Be getting at it. Come on, come on. That's it. Come on, come on. The Lord is beckoning you. Come on, come on. You're not there yet. You're not there. You're trying. You need a breakthrough. You need a breakthrough in heaven. You need to unify with the Spirit of God. There's a divine connection with the Holy Ghost and with you. A divine connection inspiring you to come on up higher. A divine connection. He's enduing you with power from on high. He's enabling you. He's enabling. We need that anointing, that enablement of God to unify one with another. We need that enablement. Come on, come on, he's doing it. You got to believe. Do you hear him? Do you trust him? Do you believe him? Come on, frontline warriors. Do you hear him? Do you trust him? Do you believe him? Hallelujah. As you line him, he's going to dispense something to you like never before. Come on, people of God. It's time for you to align with the praises of God. The praises of God are going up. Hear my cry, oh God. When praises go up, the blessings of the Lord come down. My God, I speak a release right now in the people of God. Nothing shall hinder their praises. I speak in agreement with the power of the Holy Ghost. We want to see your fresh fire. We want to see your anointing. We want to experience your authority. My God, I yield my members unto you. My God, I hear your voice. My God, how I hearken unto your voice. I hear your voice. Come on, people of God. He's waiting on you. There's going to be an implosion if you step into this realm by faith. Come on, out of yourself. You need an out-of-body experience. 
you need a new birth to experience. This is a new day in Jesus. Get there, get there, get there. Get there, get there, get there. He's taking you to a place. He's unifying you with him. Not with me, but with the power of the Holy Ghost. I yearn, I endeavor the unity of the peace that only comes to the Spirit of God. I endeavor the unity of the flow of the Holy Ghost. When I'm endued with power from on high, I can step out into the enemy's camp. My God, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm taking it back for the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violent take about it's time for the church to get violent. Hallelujah. My God, we get violent about everything else. My God, if the enemy touch our finance, we get violent. My God, if we on our sick bed, we get violent. Just because of who we are, we need to be violent in the kingdom. I'm taking it, I'm taking it, I'm taking it. I'm taking it, I'm taking it, I'm taking it. I receive it in the name of Jesus. I'm taking it. Everything. God. My God, I'm taking it for the bishop. I'm taking it for the elder. I'm taking it for the pastor. I'm taking myself. I'm taking it for the city. I'm taking it for my children because I'm unified with you. I'm unified. I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement with what you're doing. Now rain down your glory, God. Rain down your power. Rain down your authority. Rain down your spirit. No, 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 no. My God, he that ascended, my God descended down low, could no grave hold his body down. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his name. Something about the name of Jesus. I proclaim Jesus. Jesus is our everything. Jesus is our everything. See Jesus. See him as he is. Face to face, see him as he is. I yearn for the unity with the spirit. I yearn for the unity of the fire of God. I yearn, I desire, I yearn, I yearn. It's a burning desire by the power of God in my belly. Out of my belly flows. The rivers of rivers, 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 in your faith as you stand there's a breakthrough as you lift your hands there's a breakthrough as you worship there's a breakthrough if you want it you ought to stand by faith if you believe it you ought to raise your hands by faith if you receive it you got to believe it and walk in the authority as a warrior you never been this way before like the children of Israel you never been this way before it's new territory you need a new dimension of anointing to walk to the place that God is sending this ministry you need a new level of authority to where God is sending this place you need a new level of support in lifting up the hands of the leader lifting up the hands of the bishop you need a new level to lift him up high as the visionary as the power of God moved through him as the voice of God moved through him you need a level level of assistance just as they stay, he up the hands of Moses in the wilderness. Stay up the hands of the man of God. Stay up the hands of your family. Stay up the hands of your neighbor. Stay up the hands of your loved one. Stay up the hands of your children. Pass it on. It's a birthright blessing. Don't you know? You got a birthright blessing. My God. You've been born again. The blessing of God is yours. Birthright blessing. Because you are saved. Because the spirit of God lives in you. You got a birthright blessing. So walk in the unity, walk in the bond of peace, walk in the love, walk in the power, walk in the authority. Oh God, oh God, speak to their hearts. Oh God, oh God, speak to their hearts. Speak to their hearts. Stir up the gift of God. Those that got the Holy Ghost, I want you to know you've been baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And I decree that the Spirit of God be stirred up. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift of faith. Stir up the gift of love. Stir up the hope. Of, the hope of their calling. Stir it up, oh God. Stir up the joy, unspeakable joy. Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Come on, pull down. I pull down. I break down. I destroy the very. He said, I came to destroy the very work of the enemy. I came to destroy. Destroy, destroy the very work of the enemy. He don't have no power. Jesus got all power. I speak a release. I speak a release in the mind, in the mind of your people. I speak a release in the mind and the heart of your people. I 
think of release uh, in the mind, in the heart, uh, in the spirit of your people, in their body, in their soul. I speak of release. I speak down to the soulless realm. Let your word penetrate down to the bone of the marrow. Your word, your word is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two edged sword. It pierces.